What else? وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ And he had constancy of faith through his two parents. بَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ Whoa, you're translating it different, Dr. Hani. I'm sure my Arabic-speaking brothers are going crazy right now, but just be patient. The word بَرْ Al-Bar is a description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's used in the Quran very clearly when we read in ayah 52-28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reporting a group of people who entered Jannah. And they say, we used to supplicate to him, to, to invite him, to call upon him. He is indeed Al-Bar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Bar. In many different ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala contrasts Al-Bar with Al-Bahr. Al-Bar is the constancy, the stability, the ability to feel firm on land, so to speak. Whereas Al-Bahr is the sea with its waves and confusion and darkness and choppiness and kind of misdirection. And all of these, all of these concepts are attached to Al-Bahr. But Al-Bar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generally, in general in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to himself and he is the source of this constancy, stability. The people who know what I'm talking about, please write to me. You feel this constancy when you are connected clearly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A couple of beautiful parentheticals in here I will throw. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses an attribute attaching us to him directly using the word bariyya. And this is the plural of bari, bari. In Arabic, whenever you have a ya at the end of a word, that has a shadda, a swig, swiggly mark, that means it's a belonging or it's an association or it's an identity attached to the concept. So in this case, the concept is al-bar, Allah, and al-bariyya, the group of people who attach themselves or who associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean they're perfect, we're going to see. 